long remembering. History had been made in and by the Western region. The future, when all its golden promise lay ahead. Chivaulao played a very important role in the various political processes which brought Nigeria to independence. He was a member of the All Nigeria Conference, which met in Ibadan in 1950, when decisions were taken on the final stages of another constitution. Chivaulao attended the constitutional conferences for the review of Nigeria Constitution in 1953, 1954. 1957 and 1958. The welfare of millions of people for generations to come may be affected by the wisdom which we here display. If Nigerian leaders and our British partners are to prove themselves worthy of their trust, now is the time for us solemnly and truly to dedicate ourselves to seeking the greatest good of the greatest number of our people in Nigeria. It is to this end that my colleagues and I pledge ourselves. The first main task of our conference is to resolve those problems which defied solutions in 1957 and to evolve for Nigeria, for Nigeria a constitution of which both the British and the Nigerian peoples can be proud. The second is to get Her Majesty's government to agree to April 2nd, 1960 as the target date for Nigeria's independence. Independence for Nigeria in 1960 is imperative but independence for Nigeria as a corporate entity is not enough the peoples of Nigeria must at the same time be guaranteed their freedom <laughs> we must ensure we must ensure that in an independent Nigeria individual citizens throughout the land enjoy liberty, human dignity, and equality under the law. There must be one Nigeria with one constitution and one law for all. Let us therefore, Mr. Chairman Sir, close our ears to the Council of Despair which says that we cannot here at this conference agree on a constitution. If there is any doubt among us as to what should be written into the constitution, let us as Democrats that we profess ourselves to be refer such problems as the goal has done recently to the people whom we profess to represent either just before or at the federal elections late in 1959. It was at the conference of 1958, held in London, that the then Secretary of State for the Colonies fixed a date for Nigeria's independence in 1960. From October the 1st, 1960, your future will be in your own hands. From the bottom of my heart, I congratulate our entire people of Nigeria and the people of Britain for this happy culmination of a political adventure which began in Nigeria less than 100 years ago. In the years that lie ahead, those of us who have the good fortune to lead our people will need statesmanship of a high order and God's guidance in managing the affairs of our country for the benefit of every Nigerian citizen.
opening of the Western Nigeria Television Service was a great occasion, not only because it was the first of its kind in the whole of Africa, but also because of the prodigious efforts which had gone into making it possible in so short a space of time, only three months. It was a proud moment for Mr. Ecoli and the other directors of Western Nigeria Radio Vision when they arrived at Western Hall with many other distinguished people. The ceremony itself was televised, reaching viewers in Ibadan, Lagos, Abiokuta, and many other places within range of the Mapo and Abafon transmitters. Among the guests on this occasion was His Excellency the Governor of Western Nigeria, Sir John Rankin. Television will bring many benefits to the region. Entertainment will come to outlying areas, and there will be regular schools programs. Sir John was introduced to members of the Radio Vision Service, and without doubt, he congratulated them on achieving so much so soon. Chief Antony Anaharo, who was accompanied by his wife, it was a particularly important occasion, for he includes in his portfolio responsibility for the information service. His Excellency, the Governor General and Lady Robertson also attended this ceremony, which was so full of significance, not only for Nigeria, but for Africa as a whole. came the Premier Chief Obafemi Awolowo. His wife was with him. The region which he leads had pioneered public television. It was a moment of pride and congratulations as he met the distinguished guests and the people who will direct the service which can do so much to spread news, education and amusement throughout the territory and beyond. Chief Anaharo opened the proceedings. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, uh, on behalf of the government of Western Nigeria, I welcome all of you to the official opening of the television service in this region. Uh, today is a great day in the history of this region, and I think also in the history of the development of television and broadcasting services on this continent. And I'd like to thank you all very much for coming here this evening to join us in this official opening. Um, I call on His Excellency the Governor General, Sir James Robertson, to say the opening remarks. Your Excellency, Honorable Premier, Honorable Ministers, Chairman and members of the Television Corporation, ladies and gentlemen. It is a great pleasure to me to be present here this evening at the inaugural ceremony of the Western Regions Television Service. And I very much appreciate the invitation which the Chairman and Board of Directors of the Western Region of Nigeria's Radio Vision Service have sent me. I should like to congratulate both the government of the Western Region and the Overseas Rediffusion Company on the enterprise and determination which they have shown in preparing for this ceremony and for the opening of the television service in such record time. Chief Wallabur spoke next. Uh, your Excellencies, your Highnesses, ladies and gentlemen, a few events in my life have given me so much pleasure as to come before you tonight to open formally the first television network in Africa. <laughs> Western Nigeria television is already being emulated by other parts of this country as well as the number of other African states. I know that you will all gain much from this great medium of mass information and instruction. 
it is a powerful influence for good. And I am confident that in due course, it will assist in making our great country even greater. Very soon, we and our partners will introduce commercial radio to Nigeria. And we have made careful plans that this medium too will be used for your benefit. With these few remarks, I have great pleasure in formally launching Western Nigeria Television First in Africa. I ask you all to rejoice with my colleagues and me on this memorable occasion and to grasp with both hands the full advantages which this modern miracle offers. After the ceremonies in Western Hall, the guests went to Television House in Agodi, where a commemorative plaque was to be unveiled. The visitor's book received its first signatures. A quarter of a million pound building had been erected in less than four months. A tribute, said the station manager, to the enthusiasm of the 300 Nigerians engaged in the work. Chief of Wallowo made a short speech before unveiling the plaque, which in years to come will be a reminder of a historic occasion. A great new service had been inaugurated, an achievement summed up in the station's proud call sign, WNTV, first in Africa.